One of the deepest pains that we can go through is seeing people around us not understanding the pain that we go through. Not knowing what it feels like. Maybe not even caring. Not being able to empathize in the way that we need them to so that they can see we have it rough sometimes. And that we need grace in that. People, they can't understand everything about us. They can. We know that. And we don't expect them to. But we expect people in our life to feel something for us when we're in pain. You know, to really care and and feel it, whether it's sympathy or empathy, just to feel something. But most importantly in my life, what I've had to try to get from people is that understanding, whether cognitive, emotional, whatever it is. I need people to understand the pain that I go through so that they can give me the respect, grace, patience, and general compassion that I deserve for pushing through all this stuff so often. And even when I wasn't, to at least just see it and know that I need time while also pushing me forward so I don't stay stagnant, you know? That understanding, that deep-rooted understanding of what's actually going on, so that some assertiveness can be used, while also being kind to me in the process of any pain I'm going through. But that's never easily given until you go and get it. Whatever means that that takes place, whether it's you getting it for yourself, or you going and reaching out for help directly from people, and then they give you an understanding of whatever issue you have, or just of resources and skills you can use. You know, you find that you're surrounded by people who truly do understand, and maybe you just didn't. You didn't understand that people understood, maybe. I don't know. But for me, and I I think anyone who would resonate with this, we really, really, really need understanding. Validation, you know? We need that. Validation that our pain and that our struggles mean something more than just some pussy shit that we can't get through because we're not tough enough. You know, that there's something actually there. That if you stepped into my mind, you might see how much of a torture cage it can be. You know? That the the pain that I feel, it, it's deep. It cuts deeper and deeper with each instant of it occurring. And it's never easy. And the true toughness I have is the fact that I'm still here dealing with it. And for me personally actively engaging in things that are good to improve on myself and progress, fighting the pain, fighting the the diagnoses I have, for example, bipolar, fighting that horrible psychotic bipolar I deal with through a bunch of different strategies I've manifested in my life through sheer grit and determination, never fully backing down, even when it looked like it, because that's what I can do because I am tough. And I just need people to understand that just like you do. We all need that. We all need people to see the subjective nature of our pain, the struggle that we've lived, the life we've lived. It's never been fully objective. There's an, there's a subjective side to it that we need people to see, but it's hard because it's based in our perception, which is within. It's hard to correctly express that to the outside. And I'm here to talk about my own experience today with that sort of thing. And try to correlate it with last episode, you know, that was a lot about understanding the pain that you can't directly see so that you can help people and they can help you back. Today, I had a really tough morning. Like I mentioned, I am bipolar, psychotic bipolar, meaning that I can get into states of mania and depression. But the thing that kind of makes my bipolar a little different than some is that I also get psychosis with it. And in fact, that's typically the main symptom and it happens probably bi-weekly or remains consistent for a good amount of time. And it's hard to deal with because what psychosis does is disconnect you from reality and make it hard. It makes it hard for you to stay in tune with what your true reality that you've come to know before you got bipolar truly is. And with me, with being a more philosophical person, that actually can become even more difficult being open-minded about the realities of world of the world and everything, and actually having a perspective that doesn't fully jive with just basic oh it's all just bullshit it's all random chance it's all nothing i i i have my own spiritual beliefs and so with bipolar when those start to get to a certain place i have to check myself because i don't want to become so disconnected and have a severe episode like i've had three different times and end up being in a dangerous place because my story of bipolar is a very very hard one i've mentioned my weight loss a few times on here the reason or at least a big reason why I gained a hundred pounds and had to lose it all is because of bipolar medication, specifically antipsychotics. 
I was put on antipsychotics, and in about two years, I gained 100 pounds from a multitude of things, but mainly the medication. I was also depressed. I was sedentary. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was filled with fear and resentment all the time. I was abusing drugs and alcohol, and I didn't know what to do with myself in any way to treat that. But it was onset by this medication that causes weight gain. I was also put in the hospital on my first episode, and before that, I saw my whole family not know what it was like to deal with this thing that was happening to their son, their youngest son, losing his fucking mind, feeling like he's a god, but really he's causing destruction all around him to the ones he loves the most. And he's not even making sense when he talks. He's not making any sense with what he believes. He doesn't make sense to himself. He doesn't understand anything about the world he's living in because it's not this one, and he's only lived in one. This is a new world that's scary, and it doesn't work. And so every time that I slip back into even some symptoms, which happens often, there is a fear, a deep fear that's within my unconscious because I know how much bipolar has taken away from me, how it sent me down the worst possible path I could have. And I have a lot of mechanisms to combat those fears though. And it starts from understanding this fight, this fight and also letting others understand it. Letting others understand what I'm going through in the moment, like my family. Telling them what I'm going through, the symptoms, the beliefs, the delusions, just the thought process even, the feelings I have about it all. Those are things I need to tell people. I need them to be able to empathize as much as they can and rationally and logically understand the pain and also just the process. I need that. And from that, I found ways to do it myself even more so. I developed some CBT type skills that I learned myself, taught myself how to do it. I use DBT skills that I learned from a treatment program. I use a bunch of different reality checking things. I use exercise. I use everything at my disposal. And I'm only on a small dose of lithium right now, which I don't even think treats psychosis, it seems, because I've had a major episode on it before. I've learned how to understand this condition. I understand this diagnosis. But more importantly, I understand the fear that I have towards it. And so when I went out on a run today, the symptoms have gone, they had gone pretty strong. I'm actually still in an episode, but I'm, like I said, very good at managing it now. But I was there on the trail outside uh, in the woods running. And I had to walk there first. I had to walk to the place because I don't have a car to drive in the morning. And so on the walk, I just was thinking so hard about what I could do to manage this specific instance of psychosis that had gone to a peak, you know, that's kind of built up over time, over the past week or so. And I just felt myself getting more and more frantic because the things that I was typically doing weren't working. They weren't. I kept trying to use my CBT type skills. I kept trying to accept and embrace and do something with everything and make sure I could be okay and mindful about all this. But I couldn't. The beliefs that I had, they were telling me that not only was, was I in danger of like being psychotic, that's my rational beliefs, but the delusions I had, if you want to call them that, were telling me that I was on the wrong path, that I was frantically doing things and that would cause this bullshit to happen in my life. That I would become more and more psychotic because of this spiritual aspect of it, that me being too scared and frantically running towards one place to avoid that. I would end up completely going mad like I have before. That fear, not understanding why I was so afraid of it, but still fearing it because I know the loss and I know the history that I have with bipolar and psychosis that certain things happen and then I start to act a certain way and then all of a sudden I've dug myself into a deeper grave until it feels like I'm buried alive and I have to claw out of the dirt and act like it never happened, and then repeat it again in two weeks. You know, I'm afraid of that process. I'll admit it. Very afraid. But then I started to remind myself of that. You know, all those moments that I've had, you know, my life changed because of psychosis, big psychotic episodes. And then I started listing off the fears themselves that I had. You know, trying further to understand what was inside of me, truly independent from this shit, from the delusions, from the religious stuff I believed in, from the egotistical stuff that mania would tell me at the time, you know, all that. I started to separate it and I realized that I'm afraid of a bunch of different things and they're all the things that have happened to me in the real world, 
within a true reality. And when I realized that none of those things could happen to me again, because I'm strong enough to get through this, things started to make a little bit of a dent. It was still very painful though. And when that happened, I just reached the trail and I started to run in the woods. And I thought it was good. I thought that I was okay and that I didn't have to deal with this. That was it. I figured it out. Now the psychosis can subside and I can feel okay. I was wrong. There was so much pain left and I had to go and deal with it. All while fucking running, which sucks, which sucks enough. You know, it's a hard thing to deal with when you're out of breath suffering like that, but I needed it. And so I kept going down the trail and after a few minutes of me thinking I was good, I realized, oh shit, the beliefs are coming back. The beliefs that tell me that I'm fucking up. And I, I don't like to get too deep into the actual delusions, at least not yet, um, because I, I don't think it's important right now, honestly. Those are between me and myself. But the beliefs would tell me that I was in danger again, not only of going more and more psychotic, but going down a bad spiritual, religious spiritual path that I would end up just kind of failing everything that is so important to me just because I was thinking a certain way, because I was afraid of the psychosis. And then I kept trying to tell myself the same things over and over again, and they didn't fucking work. And it got to the point where I was so frustrated at myself that I just started shaming myself and my thoughts and what I said to myself, which I don't do anymore. That was something I used to do like a year ago, and it never worked. I was thinking about it. I straight up just said to myself, dude, shut the fuck up. Seriously, shut the fuck up. You know, you dumbass, you fucking dummy. Why are you thinking this? And that's when I knew something was wrong. Because I wasn't giving myself grace. I wasn't giving myself the understanding that this pain I'm going through, I need time, whatever that time limit is, to work it out. And I wanted to keep getting answers and keep getting solutions and keep feeling okay more and more and more so that I wouldn't be scared anymore. And it kind of relates back to what I talked about in the last episode. I just don't want to get hurt. And in that process of trying to not hurt myself, I ended up hurting myself through the mechanisms that I try to use. And that's when I realized I had to calm the fuck down for a second. I just stopped for a little bit. I just said, all right, dude, calm down. And... I did. I stared onto this little pond that I got to there, and it was nice, but it wasn't really going away. Regardless of that, I still felt like this was something I had to do. I had to just slow it down for a second, you know, just slow it down and think and breathe and just get on track somehow. So I started running again. I started going down the normal trail, and things just kept getting worse and worse. You know, and I mean, they got worse and worse, but they faded in and out of being bad, I guess. But each time that it faded back in to being bad, it was worse because I kept feeling the weight of my quote unquote failures in trying to deal with this stuff. It didn't feel like it was working. And I take so much pride, it seems, in treating this condition and it just wasn't working. And it was taking a toll on the run. I, I couldn't really focus. I stopped running for a little bit. I almost gave up on the run, which I don't like to do. Until eventually I got to my favorite part of the trail, which is this little crossroad thing, kind of shaped like a cross. And I just went up to it and I went up to the center of that cross. And with my beliefs intact, you know, with what I projected these words to, to mean, I guess, I'll keep that to myself too. I just kind of got on my knees and said, I don't know what to do. And I just, I, I felt that. And that admittance that understanding of the reality and of my inability to affect it at the time. I know I keep saying the word understanding almost loosely, but it truly is because that understanding is something that led to an acceptance, an acceptance that I don't know what I'm doing right now. And so I felt like I could release that urge to just keep chasing it, chasing that answer and feeling like I could do something in this moment through this frantic, desperate process to try to fix this problem that was happening. And so once I did that, I mean, I didn't think anything of it. I just thought it was just some dumb shit I was doing, but there was a part of me that believed in something happening there. And I ended up just taking out my headphones and feeling like I had to just ignore the music that I was listening to or whatever and just absorb myself fully in the moment and just feel like I could just be there. 
I don't know. I don't know how to explain that part, but it just it felt like I needed to be alone as much as I could within the environment I was in. And just so I could get my brain a rest, I guess. That's probably what it was. And that did something. You know, the combination of everything that I did leading up to that, even from the beginning when I was walking to the woods, that whole process that was so painful and felt like it was futile and wasn't working culminated into all these different things that eventually led to me feeling okay, even for a second. Even if it was just for a second, that clarity of like this feeling where the world felt still, the world felt calm, and I didn't feel so frantic anymore, that gave me a chance. And I realized like, life didn't feel so scary in that one moment. And I can't explain fully the process. And you might not understand what I mean either. And I get that. I barely do. But I felt like I could just kind of take it easy from that point. You know? And I kept just kind of going and going. And eventually I got to this little seat, this kind of stone bench that's like a memorial dedicated to someone. And I have always liked that place. It says strong and passionate on each side of the bench. And it's always just resonated with me. So I sat down on it. And I said this prior, like just repeatedly affirmed it to myself before I got there, but um, didn't seem to work at the time. But what I said later on, on that bench was something along the lines of, uh, I think it was something along the lines of, uh, if death approaches, then embrace it. If it doesn't, then rejoice. If you don't know what to do, then just do what you know and do your best. Something like that. And I... I just said it. it. It just felt like something I had to say. And before that, what I was referencing the affirmations, I just kept saying, if, if you don't know what to do, or if I don't know what to do, I'll do what I know. And I just kept saying that over and over again. Then when I got to the bench, that sort of was wrapped up in this other big mantra type thing that I said. And it taught me exactly what it needed to teach me. That feeling okay with whatever is coming towards me is truly what I need to keep doing. And that's always been something, I, or at least within this year, that I've been doing. I've even been talking about it on the podcast. You know, not rushing towards one destination out of fear, but rather embracing whatever's there and not just blindly following whatever path you're going down, but knowing what you're doing and being confident in that. And the reason I was able to say that and the reason I was able to follow those words from then on was because I truly do know how to treat this. I did know what I was doing. I understood everything that I've ever been through as something important to hold on to. And whether it worked directly or not, the understanding of my pain, the understanding of that view I have on all of this, and truly what it all meant to me, and the understanding of my own beliefs too, it allowed me to put all the knowledge that I've gained into use in that without even knowing it would work. Because, I don't know, it just felt like I had that in me. It felt like I truly was doing the right thing, even though it felt so wrong. I didn't know what to do, so I did what I knew. And it worked. And from then on, I felt clear. The delusions, at least the fearful ones, went away. And I started feeling like I could just walk down the trail or run down the trail, jog down it. It fucking felt good. And I guess like I'm trying to correlate it to understanding, but I think my, my meaning of understanding is a little different than I usually use it. It's not all just empathy, but it's just the, the heartfelt, I guess, respect that you give to something that you don't fully know in the way that you wish you did. You don't know everything about this thing. So you can only understand whatever is around you that can be used as reference. I don't know what's going on with me when I'm bipolar when I'm psychotic or manic. I don't know. I really don't. But what I do know is my time with it. I know my personal experience in what I've thought and what I've felt and what I've done. But I don't know what's going on, so I can only try to understand certain parts of it. You know, never be too sure, but be sure enough that I will be successful in that. And it kind of taught me more and more about just trusting that and trying to learn and understanding through whatever is available. And that correlates back to my episode, the you know actual video episode I made yesterday. It shows that taking the time to take whatever is in your environment and applying it to what you truly do know 
all that, it makes a difference. Even if you don't truly know what's going on, even if you barely understand what's going on, I've taken the time with my bipolar to understand every opportunity that I can share that with people and let them understand. And maybe they can give me a new perspective on it. You know, being open to understand something that is so hard to even grasp onto. And in fact, is very scary. Just like how talking to your mom about very deep issues that you went through as a child can be so difficult. Or just like how a mom can talk about deep fears that they have about raising their kid to their kid. It's all these things that we don't know how to fully grasp onto and know and articulate properly, but yet we still try to understand because we know it's important. It's important regardless of what we truly see in front of us. And we have faith in that. We have faith that we can do something with that eventually. Just like how in the beginning of that run, when I was walking to the woods, I didn't know if any of the things were working or not. In fact, I didn't think the techniques I was using worked at all. But I know they started a chain. They led me from one thought to another where I eventually looped back on things that I thought before and applied them to a moment where I felt clear enough to do so. I understood that I needed to keep doing those things even though I didn't know they would work. Now, this is a very vague, broad connection you know, between that form of understanding and emotional understanding. But it is important because it falls within this whole thing of giving time, grace, patience, and effort to understand something that you don't know much about. And not claiming that you do know, not rushing to find the answers, not trying to build and build and build on some foundation to get a solution, but just listening, observing, feeling. It's important. It served me well today. I think it could serve all of us well. That's all for today. See ya!